says the Lord, whoever believes in me will never die. Glory Glory to you. The word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered the Jews, My father is at work until now, so I am at work. For this reason they tried all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called God his own father, making himself equal to God. Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For what he does, the Son will also do. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you may be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also does the Son give life to whomever he wishes. Nor does the Father judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all who all, all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen. I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he gave to the Son the possession of life in himself. And he gave him power to exercise judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear the vo his voice and will come out, those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life, but those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus was accused of walking on the Sabbath. That's what we heard yesterday. And now he's giving an answer to why he's doing what he's doing. In doing that, he's entering into more troubles. <laughs> See, my father, you know, the English, I don't know. <laughs> my father goes on working, and so do I. You know, it's, it's more better translation. This one says, my father is at work until now, and so I'm at work. I don't understand. <laughs> you understand that thing? Maybe. <laughs> I don't. My father goes on working, and so do I. So he goes on working. And so the son only sees what the father does and continues doing that. In every family, that's what it is. You know, boys mostly literally go after what their father is doing. You know, if he likes mowing on Sunday, yeah. <laughs> they do that on Sunday and don't come to church. You know, whatever it is, you know. So they continue, you know, trying to be that way. Because, the, you know, the father, the mother, they are like gods to kids. Because what you do is static. It's just not what you say. They know the difference. And they can, they can smell it when someone is hypocritical. 
that you're not, you know, really doing what exactly you say, you know, is the nice thing to do. Jesus continues the mission that the Father has given to him. And he does this mission in union with the Father. It is only in union with the Father that his work goes forward. And then he can give life to whomever he chooses. Because the Father gives life. The Father is the creator. The Father is the author of life. But it is in union with his Son that God creates. Because the Son is the word of God himself. And through the word, creation was done, came into being, is sustained and nurtured and comes to its final destination. So not only does the father, the son watches the father in his act of creation, the son continues the act of creation and redemption of what has been created. To redeem what has been created. Because sin had defiled, but now the Son is sent forward to redeem, to renew, to recreate as it were. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he chooses. So death came from sin. So every human person was spiritually dead until the coming of Christ. So he gives life, a new life, much beautiful than the first. Nor does the father judge anyone. The father judges no one. It is the son that is given the power to judge the living and the dead. To judge. So when people say, do not judge, you are judging me or someone is judging I don't know what, what it means. No one can judge the other person's eternal damnation. Nobody. But you can judge. You can judge if somebody is, is flouting the traffic rule. Don't you know? <laughs> when somebody breaks the traffic light, you know that. That's wrong. That's a judgment. Parents can judge, you know. The child who obeys and the ones who doesn't obey. They judge. Because there's a measurement. You can judge if somebody is tall or somebody is short. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? You can judge. A judge can sit in judgment and know whether to throw somebody in the jail or to acquit him. It's judgment. Why are all those ones accepted? But when somebody makes a judgment between good and evil, then all hell is let loose. So you know, there's an attempt to oppose and muscle what is good. So you can say to yourself, I'm okay, you're okay, everybody's okay. But that is, on, that is very, very false. There's nothing farther from the truth than that. But eternal judgment, the complete judgment, the final judgment is left for the son. He's the one who creditably is able to see who is on the right and who is on the wrong. He exercises judgment on behalf of the Father. In living the way we live, in living in accord to God's will, we continually experience life and joy. We continue, continually experience His pain if we do not go according to the will of the Father. And it's always beautiful today, you know. Yeah, St. Patrick's. <laughs> You talk, you'll be having St. Patrick's. I don't need to look too far before I see the green. You know, I can see one. <laughs> you know, and all the green spotted here and there. I don't know where the green aspect of it, you know, but I, there's a lot of Irish heritage here and there. And there's a lot about the man called Patrick. He was born into wealth in Britain. But it, was, it didn't just go that way. He was kidnapped and sold as a slave. And that's where the critical point starts from. Wealth up there and down there. And while in his loneliness, 
in his slavery, he could recall the teachings of his parents about religion, about faith, even though before then he didn't want to be religious, he didn't want to do anything about it, but he was being taught. The parents knew that they had a responsibility to their son to teach him faith at that age. That was what he fell back on when he was alone. He fell back on that. And he felt a desire to pray, a desire to be part of it. Because now, now it was coming. It was handy. He needed it. It was miracle. He had a miraculous you know, escape and got off. But he continued to long to return to Ireland where he was kidnapped. <laughs> where he was kidnapped. He longed to go back and desired to serve God. And he gave his life to that. But so then the priest, so then the bishop became a great missionary. He did not allow his kidnap to become a source of regret, a source of pain, and an eternal damnation for himself. But he gave it up all and did what he was grateful. He turned it around. He turned disaster into joy, to his inner joy. But you can never talk about St. Patrick without talking about his, that point of his kidnap and slavery. Which God allowed, by the way. God allowed that, by the way. Have you ever looked at yourself sometimes or look at people around you sometimes and we're just sunk in regrets about life? And we're just caught up by the fact that Something that happened to you, probably not out of your own design, probably, and you hold on to it, and hold on to it, and never free yourself by the power of the whole word of God, and never get free, and never get past it. Who keeps people in that situation? There's a negative memory that keeps someone hooked in the past. There's the one that continues to fan the memory that makes you remember all negatives that happened in the past, but you never remember any good. What does that mean? It means that once wants you to really, really just continue to remain there, to be stuck and be imprisoned in your past. Even if I was responsible for the evil that has happened to me, even if you were responsible for the evil that has happened to you at the point or a disaster, something that is not, not totally good, you can be free. The word of God frees. Jesus frees. To say, no, it's all over. If the devil tries to remind you of your past, remind him of his future. Teresa of Avila says, remind him of his future. Because the devil's future is doomed. If the devil tries to remind you of your past and imprison you in your past, then you say, if we, you already go to confession and it's already hanging on the, on the cross. You laid it on the foot of the tree of Jesus. So it goes away. Patrick did not allow that. Saint Bakita of Sudan did not allow that. She was sold into slavery. Joseph did not allow that. He was sold into slavery. <laughs> so you see, Never allow the liar, the seducer, the calumniator, the one who brings division, to sell you into slavery and keep you in that slavery, perpetual slavery, the slavery of sin, the slavery of regret, the slavery of guilt, the slavery of shame, the slavery of embarrassment. Those are the slavery that kills and destroys. And you're just an empty version of the real you. The real you must stand up. The real you must hold on to the hand of Christ and walk from that darkness into light. The bridge to get into light is Jesus. Walk on that bridge. Walk on that bridge and tell him, Lord, I wouldn't let you go unless you bless me and he's going to pull you. Pull you and and move you. Everything that has happened to us in the world, and I mean it, and I'm going to say, you know, this is what it is and it's the truth, was allowed 
by God. There's a permissive will of God that allows it. But he wants to draw good out of it. We must ne never get stuck in the mud of the past, no matter how dark and deep and destructive they are. Look at this light. Lord Jesus brings light. The Lord Jesus brings life. The devil, he says, the thief has only come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come so that they may have life. Life in abundance. If you don't experience life in yourself, go to confession. Seek, seek a spiritual direction. And be able to, you know, be accompanied to walk that, that distance. And I, 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 I give myself to you in any day you're interested in doing that. Just come and ask me and I'll lead you, I'll guide you on how to walk that journey from darkness to light. That's what the priest does to help everybody to be able to move that direction and so life will return to you. And then you begin a new way, a new direction. There's only one person who tries to imprison is the evil one. The Lord Jesus always helps us to get light, to get life. Let us hold on to him. Call our blessed mother to squeeze and scrub and crush and crush that one. Crush. <laughs> he doesn't want to see the blessed mother because she's the immaculata, she's the immaculate one. He's the vile one. She's the obedient one. And he's the disobedient one. The mother is humble, he's prideful. So they're never in the same box. Say, Mary, mother of Jesus, be a mother to me now. And then he'll crush him, he'll crush him. He'll be, he'll be gone, gone, gone. Doesn't want that man. Hey, Jesus, I trust in you. Hold on to trust. Hold on to trust. Jesus, I trust in you. You know what? You walk that breed. The devil doesn't go once. He comes again and comes again and repeat the exercise again. Repeat the exercise again. And you'll get it free. Freedom belongs to all those who hold on to the Lord Jesus. Look at Ireland today. What it would have been without somebody like Patrick. <laughs> you can be that in Davenport. You can be that in our environment. You can be that person. By not allowing regret and the slavery of sin to pin you down. But coming into the light and then do what? Everybody around you will now be filled with the light just because you become an inspiration.